I had been living in Playa del Carmen in Mexico for a few months. It's an incredible tourist destination in the Riviera Maya, an east part of Mexico, with millions of tourists coming every year. I had been enjoying my time here and had a modern apartment really close to the beach where I had been staying. Outside the apartment there was a nice swimming pool that I had been swimming in every day, but in the past weeks I had gradually been getting extremely sick. At first I had recovered, but then my memory loss, uncontrollable shakings, confusion and fever was coming back and I even had to go to the hospital. But what had caused these symptoms? A blood test at the hospital had first said poisoning by a deadly substance and infection. But how and what was it? After eight days of extreme fever, I was back swimming in the cenotes of Mexico. And my mom had also come from Sweden. Here she was jumping into a cenote from the top. I was so happy that I could finally show my mom a cenote after I had been inside sick for some time. And she had come a few days after I first got sick. We had been snorkeling together in this incredible clear water. And one reason why I came back to live in Mexico again after traveling around in the world was actually because of these incredible water holes. I thought I was fine after my initial sickness, but things were about to get much, much worse again. But I did not know that at this time. For now, I was really happy to be swimming around once again in these incredible water holes. Two days later. Oh, I just woke up. My mom has been here from Sweden for some time and we've been going swimming at the pool here in the mornings. I think she's down there now so I'm gonna go swim a bit. I had been swimming a few laps in the morning but I had noticed that I couldn't really swim much without getting really really tired. Before 9 a.m. Um, it's been nice actually to relax. I was uh, going to the gym so much and then I got really sick and now I've been relaxing a lot more no. it was really nice that my mother had come to visit in Mexico and it was really nice to be swimming with her in the swimming pool even though I couldn't swim much just from swimming a few laps I had one of the worst sicknesses I've ever had in my life <laughs> Could, couldn't walk or move and br or breathe and then I was sick for so long I just had to take it really easy and not do too much uh, <coughs> too much like movements Soon again I had gone back to the gym to do a little workout, but that's when things got much much worse again. I couldn't get out of bed and was so so extremely tired. My breathing was also really heavy and shallow and I couldn't think. <coughs> oh, I've, uh, I, start, I started going to the gym. And then this sickness came back, and since it came back, I haven't been able to think, and I lose my memory. And get a bit panicky, and I don't know where I am sometimes. <clears throat> and then now I have three blankets on me here. 
and I start shaking, like my whole body starts shaking and my breathing becomes really shallow. <clears throat> it comes and goes and I can feel fine for a few hours, like clear in my head. And then all of a sudden it comes like an attack. Like I just have to lay down and my head gets so tired and I can't think. But my mom actually has been here, so that's been really good because I can't go outside or buy any food or nothing. She came two days after I first got sick and she's been here and that has been helpful. This is the weirdest thing I've ever felt. It's like sometimes I get a bit scared of my own thoughts, I can't control my thoughts. I remember I was feeling so totally confused here and didn't really know what was going on. A few days later. My condition was getting much worse and also my vision was getting really really fuzzy. So we got into a taxi and started heading to the hospital to get some help. I also had fever again. Now I made it to the hospital here <coughs> to see what's wrong. It's a hospital here in Playa del Carmen called Hospiten. So we're gonna see what it's like to go in here. I was so happy that my mother happened to be here during the sickness but I was also scared that she would get sick from whatever I was having. We were in the emergency room and had to wait for some time before we could speak to the receptionist. I filled out some papers and uh, <coughs> I came into the toilet I can barely stand up. I have to sit down. We got into the hospital after some time and had to pay $700 just to see the doctor, even though I have a health insurance. But in Mexico, you have to pay still with your credit card. So even if you have a health insurance, which I have, then you still have to use your own credit card to pay for the hospital visit. So it can end up getting very, very expensive if something is really, really serious and you need a lot of treatment. I saw a doctor, but then they sent us back out to the reception. <coughs> so this, I think, was one of the <coughs> one of the biggest scams I've ever encountered in Mexico. <coughs> I'm gonna explain also later on when I feel a bit better because I have fever now. I don't know how much fever, but I'm feeling quite weak. But I ended up doing a blood test <coughs> and um, they wanted two hundred dollars just for the blood test and uh, at first it was seven hundred dollars just to see a doctor and that included nothing but seeing a doctor and then uh, <coughs> yeah i can't think i'm gonna explain it now i have to wait here for this blood test but they also wanted to do iv and they wanted thousand dollars for the iv and then when i was in there because we no longer, and I, was, I told them that's way too much to, to get some kind of IV. <coughs> and um, they wouldn't let us sit inside there in the actual hospital. Because now we, we didn't want to pay that much, right? I didn't want to pay like thousand dollars for IV. It just ended up paying 200 again. They came back when we sat in there. And then they now they forced us to go back in out here to wait because I didn't want to pay thousand dollars for this IV. So we're no longer like valuable customers. They can't milk or suck as much money out of us. And this whole time here, <coughs> the receptionist goes back and forth in between the hospital to the customers. And then you need to go back and pay. Okay, now you need to pay this and this and this. Go back to the reception, pay with credit card. And then you go, can go back into the hospital <coughs> and get some treatment again. And then they, they see like how much money they can get out of you. 
they just try to milk you, <laughs> milk money out of you as much as possible. That's what it seems like because now we have to sit here in the reception again and wait for like an hour or so. <coughs> so here is the reception where we need to sit now instead of in the inside the actual hospital. Uh, they just forced us to go out as, as soon as I said I didn't want to pay a thousand dollars for this IV. They said you refused the treatment, you refused to pay, so you need to sit out in the reception. I said, is, nor is it normal to pay thousand dollars for some kind of IV? We came back into the hospital again to get the blood test results and at this point I had paid nine hundred dollars just for a blood test and to see a doctor real quick. If you get lucky you can get the money back later from your insurance company, but we all know that that's a big hassle. Hola, eh, Mega Soriana. Quanto cuesta? 50. So I came, we came out of the hospital and I took a taxi back to the starting point and on the way there I paid 200 pesos, on the way back I paid 50 when I talked to another guy. And at the hospital, that's what I'm getting kind of sick about in Mexico, you always get ripped off when you're not from here. Like I actually made a video <coughs> when I pretended uh, to not be a tourist recently. And I think I'm gonna insert some of those clips and it was way different then how people talk to me and what they try to do. One really, really weird thing that I just realized when I've been walking here. Usually when I walk here, like the people that work in these stores, they always come up and want to sell something. Like every single like 20 seconds. Now that I've walked, not a single person has come up to me. So we came back from the hospital today and uh, <coughs> I got the results from the blood work and it shows here in the blood work that my chloride, like uh, chloride levels are way too high above the highest of the values of the range where it should be <coughs> and um, I think that's what has caused me to be really sick and uh, I think what it could be is that I've been boiling <coughs> boiling the tap water here um, and I think the tap water here in Mexico is full of chlorine. Chlorine is the same as chloride and um, it's supposed to, if you boil the water, it's supposed to kill all bacteria and uh, like <coughs> germs and stuff but uh, I was just reading that <coughs> Chlorine, you have to boil the water for 15 minutes or more for the <coughs> for the chlorine to go away. And I've been doing that for, I've been here for like two and a half months and uh, I've been boiling the tap water every day and then making pasta and eating pasta. But I lived in Playa del Carmen last year for more than three months and I boiled the tap water every single day then as well to make food and never had any problems. But when you look in the pots that you've been boiling tap water with, you can see a substance and a layer of some kind of white stuff. In the blood test, it also said that I had a low RDW value, an in increased segmented value, as well as higher chloride levels than you should have. I'm not sure what all of this means, but I did some quick research. The doctor had said that I had some kind of infection in my body and also that someone my age should not have elevated chloride levels. And also somebody I met today when I came out of the hospital said that there's so much chlorine also in the water here and that your skin can absorb it when you shower. And then you get even <coughs> more chloride in your bloodstream. Um, <coughs> and I was drinking, usually you can't drink the tap water here. So I was buying always water from the store, uh, from OXO, but I don't know what <coughs> what has caused all of this, but it's hope hopefully an explanation to why I was here shaking in bed for 10 minutes, I thought I was going to die, I was sure, I'm, I'm think I was thinking I'm dying now, I'm, this is it, just shaking, I couldn't control my muscles, like total muscle spasms, I couldn't move my legs, I was just totally frozen and shaking like I was gonna die and I was reading here also about uh, <coughs> when you have too much chloride or chlorine in your bloodstream you can get numbness, I also had numbness in my hands and like a tingling feeling 
seizures or convulsions, irregular heart rate, which I also had. I was felt my heart was like really weird. And then muscle weakness, spasms or twitches. <coughs> also confusion, and difficulty concentrating. <coughs> I also had that. Couldn't concentrate. My mind was all totally like confused and my memory loss and I couldn't think. I had so many weird thoughts. <clears throat> Almost a bit of like hallucinations and um, so, so weird. But uh, um, I'm going to stop boiling the tap water. <clears throat> and also, uh, yeah, I don't know. I might just leave for Mexico. It's It's too much shit that seems to that it can happen here. And also at the hospital I had to pay nine hundred dollars to see one doctor and get one blood test. Nine hundred dollars. But I do have a health insurance so <coughs> I don't know, may I'll probably get some of the money back because the deductible is like two hundred and fifty dollars. Oh, but they also, the doctors, they wanted me to do a, like an IV for a thousand dollars. We get hooked up to an IV. And then they wanted a thousand dollars just to get hooked up to an IV. And then <coughs> they also thought that because of this I have some kind of infections. I got some antibiotics. Don't know if it's going to help. But I had fever before this for one full week. First fever one week. I felt better for a few days. And then... I got sick again. That's when the confusion came and I couldn't think and was when the shaking was starting. My whole body was shaking in bed like this. Mm. <clears throat> and also a bit of difficulty breathing is what I've had. As a common disinfectant, chlorine is used to clean surfaces in swimming pools and in water to kill bacteria and pathogens. But chlorine at high concentrations is extremely dangerous and poisonous to living organisms. As a chemical warfare agent, chlorine was first used in World War I as a poisonous gas weapon. So, I don't know what I'm gonna do. The doctor told me that I should not eat much salt. But then they also gave me like some kind of uh... <coughs> So I guess I'm gonna rest some more. And yeah, this is the drink they gave me, like Pedialyte. It's supposed to make your um, <coughs> balance up your... I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm still feeling confused and... Yeah, so this is um, <coughs> the bottle I got, Pedialyte. It says in the prescription, <coughs> take one, drink one full bottle every four hours for three days. I think to balance the electrolytes in your body. And then try antibiotics also. $900 to see one doctor. I was also prescribed antibiotics because the blood test had indicated an infection, but it only kills bacteria and not viruses. This type, called ciprofloxacin, also had some really strong side effects. The doctor didn't know what kind of infection I had. Maybe if I would have stayed in the hospital and done a lot more tests, maybe I could have found out. But that for sure would have gone up to about $15,000. I wouldn't be surprised. Also, the funny thing is that the doctor told me to not <coughs> eat much salt. But in this Pedialyte drink, there's a bunch of sodium. And sodium is salt. <laughs> I don't know. What I wanted to say earlier, um, I don't know if I said it, but there's a lot of chlorine in the tap water here. Also, your body can absorb it when you shower and also when you go to swimming pools. You sit in a swimming pool for too long. I had been in the swimming pool every day for long periods of time and had felt a type of slimy texture to the water, which is typical of high chlorine levels. Your body, I was reading that, your body can absorb chlorine. And somebody told me also that there's so much chlorine in the water here that you have to change like the shower head of the shower like every like six months or a year because there's there's so much um, minerals and shit like in the actual water chlorine.
In the next video I discovered an excessive amount of chlorine in the swimming pool where I had been swimming, which was not good. And I also buy a chlorine test to test the chlorine levels. So this shaft here is connected to my apartment from the outside. The shaft, you can see the flow right there. It's never been cleaned for many, 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 many years. We're gonna go to the door here. I also discovered a shaft going from the basement that had a bunch of mold in it and that air was flowing quickly into my shower with a moist yeah, environment. I, I discovered several inches of mold right there. There were also some rusty pipes right outside. Subscribe to the channel to see the next video and where I continue to investigate the cause of my strange sickness. It might take me some time until I upload that video because I still have not recovered.